Welcome to the Chaos Cast. We finally are coming to the end of this absolute nightmare of a presidential election with Joe Biden being officially announced the victor. Finally, a decision was made. They're calling Georgia and Pennsylvania. The Associated Press just announced this. Uh, there are still going to be litigation battles going on, specifically in Pennsylvania, which it, it has been determined at this point that Joe Biden is a president-elect. And it is really time to start talking about moving forward. Now, uh, my major complaint with the GOP and with the neoconservative uh, uh, electorate is that these people sit on their hands and they're not going to take up for Trump. I knew that to begin with. And and I feel like everybody, it, it would amaze me if everybody is not at this point convinced uh, going into the election that this was going to be the result. I called this, I did make a couple of different prediction maps and ways in which Trump could win. But ultimately, everyone I talked to, I told them I thought Joe Biden was going to end up winning. There are some alarming responses to this which has been going on for days now, the entire Republican voter bloc has been screaming fraud and um, election interference. And I, I have no evidence to deny you that claim, but pr produce evidence if you're going to make sweeping claims like that, because isn't that exactly the type of attitude that the right accused the left? Of? So why does it always have to be this way? No matter what, the side that loses, it's it's moving more and more in this direction where if you're on the losing side, you just flail your arms and scream as if, you know, you've been robbed. Now, Donald Trump, I'm not surprised he is given the responses he is saying in, in the last press conference he did that if you count the legal votes, then he easily wins. If you count the illegal votes, well, his rhetoric has never been great. You know, uh, I voted for the guy and I, I had very little faith going into it that he was going to see a second term. I'm not happy with the results myself, but it, this is bigger than just our individual opinions. And it's it's really important that we don't continue to undermine and destroy the election process. Um, there There is definitely some good news for the conservative base. The Senate is held, and that means all of this fear-mongering. Man, this has been a, an election cycle so stuffed with fear porn. Uh, everybody has been saying, you know, oh, well, if Joe Biden wins, he's going to he's gonna get rid of the Electoral College and pack the Supreme Court. And hey, no wonder why they're saying that, you know, because I, I do feel like the, the intention of the left-wing political establishment in the DNC was to hopefully win the presidency and the Senate, and they probably would have done those things, um, even though they're wildly unpopular. So we can set that aside now, and thankfully, because I'm really sick of all sides just producing a bunch of fear porn and telling everybody, you know, oh, well, if, if you don't vote for us, the whole world is going to end. Um, this is This is like typical strategy, but it's gotten so ridiculous, and because we are in such a divided cultural time, they're really capitalizing on these types of narratives. Uh, I feel like the right accuses the mainstream media establishment of being extremely um, partisan in that they produce these types of narratives of fear and pandemonium. We, we all saw it with COVID. You know, I do understand the right's um, pr problems with the rhetoric that's been going on. It's so dismal and uh, it's so hopeless. It's like they, they're clinging people into these uh, mentalities that there is just no hope forward and everything is lost. And, you know, COVID has been a serious, it is a serious thing. It has killed a lot of people, uh, specifically a lot of people with pre-existing conditions that are advanced in age. So we do need to take these things seriously, but I don't understand how it helps to just get everyone into a panicked and frenzied mentality that the world is coming to an end. And definitely the media, without doubt, got every bit of 10 to 15 points for Joe Biden this election because their entire narrative for five years has been Donald Trump is is Russia's, I don't know, uh, informant or something. And, you know, a lot of people, they don't have an external source. They don't 
look into these claims. They just assume it's on TV on every station that they watch. How could it possibly not be corroborated? And once the narratives get debunked, it's not like you have CNN and MSNBC come out and be like, oh, what, our bad, our bad. We didn't realize we were completely feeling you full of shit for three years. <laughs> you know, so in our social circles, you still find these interactions where people are making those claims and you see other people like, wait, how do you not know that that was that was debunked? And they have no clue, you know, because they never got access to the information that explained that this was totally made up. We're moving into a time as a country where uh, it's really important now that we recognize the threat of pursuing these types of uh, arm flailing contests and, and screaming voter fraud is extremely detrimental to the country as a whole. It will produce further division. If there was, if I felt like there was some kind of actionable uh, way that it could be proven in some way the election was bunk, which I don't think that, honestly. This was kind of how I saw things going. Um, I, I understand people who, who may feel like, you know, Donald Trump was in some way robbed, but really, I, I just can't get behind you with those claims. I, I feel like he probably fairly lost the election. Um, if there's any evidence to the contrary, I'd totally love to see that. I have saw stories cropping up on the internet uh, showing instances of somebody, uh, mostly, I think that the, the legal argument here, especially from Trump's campaign, is they have evidence of people who had moved and had already cast a ballot and then got a mail-in ballot. You know, they had their mail transferred to wherever they moved, got a mail-in ballot, cast it in the new territory they're in, and got to vote twice in some circumstances. And in other circumstances, their vote should have just been disqualified by swing, but for swinging the electoral college because they no longer were a resident of the area they voted in. This is one of the major problems with super early voting and mail-in voting. You see, it, it is definitely a terrible system. And we've known that. I mean, it, wasn't it Carter who said that a long time ago, that there's just no way to protect an election and, and the integrity because it's such a complex system with the electoral college. Um, a lot of what would seem to be irrelevant little places and districts in small population areas can truly affect the outcome of an election. We were at a point with this one where for two days it was fringing, going back and forth, back and forth. You know, nobody really knew what was going on. It was like a Rubik's Cube because everything was shifting red and blue everywhere in all critical states that had to be won. So. Uh, congratulations to the left. Congratulations to the Biden-Harris campaign. I'm not happy you're the president, but you're the president. So, you know, good for you. I hope that you rule as a moderate. I hope that you stick to your guns, but I don't think you will. But happy to be proven wrong, if you will prove me wrong. That would be fantastic. Um, I'm really tired of it, to be honest with you. I'm tired of the entire thing. We just had like a six-day election, and it got old, like on the second day. So uncertainty breeds distrust. Uh, it would seem to me the best thing now would be for a decision to be made, uh, so long as it can be certified by commissions that are bipartisan and are approved by the Electoral College. So be it, you know. Um, and this is what I feel like it's time for everybody to zoom out a little bit and recognize. Uh, look around you, you know, go outside, turn your damn phone off. And, and let this kind of like play out now. Yes, there's going to be litigation. There is going to be a, a period where a lot of people who are not ready to accept this result, they have something to cling on to. And Trump's going to, you know, he's going to feed that to you. I don't recommend that you get emotionally invested in that, though. It's not going to be good for you in the end. And, you know, if, if again, I'm not saying, well, there is no way that this could be false. It could be a fabricated result. I do think it's extremely unlikely that the number of ballots were fabricated because I do understand our electoral system a little bit, and it would be at least obvious to somebody that is monitoring this. A lot of the counting stations were done in public. You can watch the whole thing. Uh, online and you can go in person. They've had lawyers 
um, present with both parties, making sure that there's not a lot of tomfoolery that's possible to go on. Ultimately, you know, it, it's just I don't see that they were able to fabricate in the upwards of hundreds of thousands of made up votes or uh, I, I mean, if someone can explain to me what the what the going conspiracy is right now, I'd be happy to listen. But again, I think you're pretty far off base if, if you think that the system is so um, easy to be tampered with that some guy can just come and write a bunch of fake names down or get dead people's social security numbers and fill out a ballot for them. I don't think that's what we're dealing with here. Was record voter turnout? That's positive. Uh, even though the GOP is the minority party in the country, which maybe a lot of people don't realize that. The Democratic Party has been the majority on registered voters for a very long time. And there, there, there is something to be said about the dynamic that a lot of people don't recognize. And this goes for both sides. You have a dynamic where both sides see their own side as the leader of efficacy and morality. In other, in other words, the both parties view themselves in a mirror image as the party of righteousness. And vice versa, they view one another as the evil people. Deplorables. You know, we, we've seen for five years Trump and his administration and Republicans and their voter bases be demonized as deplorable human beings who just ultimately they just want to get rid of minorities. They want to keep women in the kitchen and they want gay people to go to church and boot camp and be converted or you know, whatever. And they're they're waging a war against women because they stand against abortion. So I think that's pretty crazy. I think that's an unfair characterization. Likewise, with a lot of the rat, there is a humongous horde of radicals on the left and the progressive movement, which we have got a front row seat all summer of the actions in Portland from Antifa, of extremely violent BLM movements. Um, and unfortunately, it makes it even easier for the right to further conceive the opposition as the enemy of humanity. You know, these are some very complicated dynamics at play, but I can tell you that it's not accurate to just portray the opposite ideology from yours as evil and the enemy. I mean, th there is, in many cases on both sides, there is a fringe instance of truly backwards, morally impaired human beings who are so mixed up on an interpersonal level that their actions can be detrimental to humanity. And it would be easy to see why anybody could characterize them as the enemy of truth and of free, especially when you see these types of uh, actions against free speech and just basic human rights that are guaranteed. That's the whole purpose of the government at the end of the day is to ensure those rights are not infringed upon. So um, I, I can sympathize with a lot of the right base on on issues like that. It's it's just so contrary to me, however, that people have forgotten so quickly on both sides how the interplay of liberalism and conserva <coughs> conservatism works. OK, you have these two extremely important. Fundamental ideologies without liberalism a lot of the advancements and strives in the modern era could not have been possible, right? Without liberalism and socially liberal ideas, there would have been a lot of progress. We would have all been denied. And likewise, without conservatism, you risk having a society destroyed for the sake of innovation and progress itself. Uh, just change for the sake of change, not for the good of all. So conservatism is hesitant and it is careful. It is cautious. It, it does not want to destroy things which work just for the sake of replacing things with new things that may not work. It is important that there is a restrictive force in society that wants to keep everything bound together, that doesn't want to sacrifice the nation 
for things that may not work. And then it is also important that you have a push for progress. It is also important you have a push to go beyond the boundary and to create a more just and humane world. Now, I don't think that's a fair characterization. There are shadows to both of these sides. And more and more leftism is becoming divorced from liberalism, right? I, I think that's fair to say. The far left and liberals have almost nothing in common anymore. We're literally talking about a fringe on the left that are just full-blown anti-capitalist communists. And unfortunately, the left, I was hoping through this election, would be forced into a situation of reform and to distance themselves from the type of uh, equality of outcome communist Marxist movements that are infiltrating, I mean, probably honestly now make up the majority of the party. Moderate leftism is very difficult to find in a mainstream uh, stage. There are quote unquote centrist leftists and liberals in mainstream politics, but I think it's safe to say that's not the direction the party is moving in. Uh, more and more, the party of De of the Democrats is becoming excessively radical. And, you know, Kamala Harris, right before the day of the election, she released a equality versus equity campaign video, which really frightens me because that's saying that's saying equality of outcome. And if you're not familiar with these terms, what I'm talking about here is equality of opportunity versus equality of outcome. If you have equality of opportunity, it can seem harsh because it is it is stating that not everybody can end up at the same place, but everyone will be given the same opportunities to do so. The issue is not everybody is the same. Not everybody has the same talents. Not everybody has the same intelligence. Not everybody has the same potential and capacity as everyone else. And as a result, there will be people that stack up at the bottom. There will be people that stack up at the top, and those will be fewer and fewer, and the bottom will get larger and larger. It, there is a problem with uh, income disparity. It is true that any society that hopes to stay in a stabilized condition must not outcast and forget those who stack up at the bottom. I'm not exactly 100% sure how to deal with that issue, but I can tell you, no place on earth has ever fixed that issue and no economic system, no matter what its claims, are capable of fixing that issue. All equality of outcome, which is to say that no matter where everyone starts at or what talents they have, everybody will get the exact same outcome regardless. All that is capable of doing is ensuring that everybody ends up equally at the bottom, aside from a very few handful of elite and privileged, privy political pundits. Those people who, in oftentimes what happens with, with communist revolutions, is the very people who are uh, incited into violence through rhetoric and through these ideologies, they are used as a sort of frontline fodder for the revolution, and they are discarded and killed in the act of violent revolution. And they're totally discarded at the end of it. I mean, go read books like uh, The Gulag Archipelago by Solzhenitsyn, and it's very clear in his writings that the party had such a grip on people's hearts and souls and minds that they dared not question it even in their own being. They dared not question even when they'd been thrown into work camps after showing complete loyalty to the Communist Party and to the revolution, after being instrumental, and after spending their entire lives and, and giving up their, their families, giving up their children, you know, telling on their wives that they would still be thrown into work camps and discarded. And they even then would not dare question the just nature of communism and the party that they had helped to usher in, even whenever it was destroying their civilization, even when it was feeding their children to wolves, even when it was letting people that had been loyal to the movement starve to death and become cannibals. 
very dark stuff. So there is definitely some reason to be concerned. I'm not going to lie. There is a lot of reason to look at the global landscape here and say, shit, you know, we, we are in a situation now that is, we're far worse off. I understand that the right is probably being far more exaggerated about that than I am, but I do have hope. And I'm going to tell you why I have a little bit of faith that this can work out in a more advantageous way than most people are able to reckon with at the moment. First of all, I just want to say to the universe itself, this humanity and all of its achievements and failures, all of its pleasure and suffering, and especially its electoral processes, is not even a drop in an infinite ocean to the universe, or what men have called God. There is no doubt that the universe is not concerned about this. Um, and maybe to some people that comes off as nihilism, like, well, you're saying we don't matter. No, what I'm saying is we oftentimes get too zoomed in to see what is going on and to recognize that a lot of the things we put our attention into and a lot of the a lot of the things that absorb the dominant portion of our lives is a distraction, is a distraction from what is all around us. Because we more and more with social media and with the technological revolution, we want to project ourselves into someplace else, into something else. And, you know, just as with all elections, yes, there's consequences. Yes, this is going to have drastic uh, outcomes on the future of the world and where we find ourselves four years from now. But there is another election in four years. Okay, do not assume that the country is going to be ushered into a communist revolution in the next four years. It's not that simple. There are checks and balances, and luckily the Senate is held. And, uh, you know, a lot of these things are extremely unpopular with the American people. You know, most people, they don't want a radical revolution. And that's why Joe Biden eventually was elevated to be the candidate, because all of the other, you're talking about, look at the DNC, what they were running. New Age spiritualists talking about moving away from, from fossil fuels to plant and crystal medicine. We had people, we had literal socialists and communists on the ticket. Now, I'm not saying they're not still in this party and going to have a grip on the levers of power now. However, I think ultimately that is going to play out in favor of the American people. I think it is quite possible that the left is going to break its public image forever after now. Uh, I do hope that the right reforms. Uh, I even hope to some extent that the two-party system dissolves completely. And I would l I'm not saying I want like 18 parties that nobody likes like in UK, but it is definitely time to to take a look and see even for you radical lefties. I mean, is do you really feel like you're being represented by Joe Biden? Do you really feel that way? Because I didn't feel properly represented by Donald Trump, but I can tell you at least he he spoke directly to the middle class and to the American people. Uh, he didn't pander to elitism, you know. He didn't pander to the to giant corporate entities. All of the corporate plutocracy, all of big tech and big money were on the left side which it's neither here nor there. I'm just saying I would much rather have somebody that's not flirting with throwing away the middle class for unchecked immigration. And it's almost like, you know, you see all these celebrities that the left hoists out onto TV who are telling everybody, go vote, you know, go vote. And naked people are bringing out naked celebrities saying, oh, you know what? You want to see my boobs vote? Um, it would seem to me that you're assuming you need to go tell people who normally wouldn't vote that they need to go vote because you are assuming that they're going to vote for you. It's almost as if you know you're going to reach out to low information people. And because they are low information, if you can persuade them into voting, you know they don't have enough information to vote for anyone but you. Oh, 
you know, and I think in a large way, that's what we are seeing this election. You have a bunch of people who aren't following news. And if they are, all they're getting is Donald Trump is a Nazi who, who loves Vladimir Putin. And unfortunately, that type of low information step. And also the left is trying to say, let's let 16 year olds vote. That's a great idea. Yeah. Let all let sophomores in high school decide who is the commander in chief of the country. It's like they're vying for low information people and knowing they're going to vote for the left because they don't know any better. They don't know anything else. And the right has been so publicly demonized, and it's going to get worse now. Uh, I don't know if anyone else has heard about like the Facebook purge that is going on. I'm not. I'm not totally corroborated that this is happening as a result of what the people that have been banned are saying it is. But it looks pretty frightening. We have truth and reconciliation lists coming out. There is a whole host of reasons to be pessimistic moving forward. But if the left enacts enough unpopular and unfavorable things, if we have enough of a detrimental disservice to the middle class and enough problems and chaos created, if law and order is not maintained, which I think everyone on the right is suspecting that will be the case, we're going to have the narrative of minority people being hunted in the streets by the police. It's going to be elevated like in a way we have never seen. I feel like they're going to throw this in everybody's face and and point out, you know, that America is a racist evil nation and and hype up the social unrest and discord. So all of that is bad. But they may not have enough time to completely dismantle the balances of power and the checks and balances of this country, which may ultimately result in a widespread political disassociation of the voter bloc. I do think the the answer is not putting in some lifetime career politician. And I do think that Donald Trump played a pivotal part of restoring balance and order to this country. Because for so long, we have had the two-party system has presented two candidates that ultimately behind the curtains they believe in the exact same crap. They believe in useless foreign interventionalism in wars, and they believe in a, a type of mainstream spying, not just abroad, but on their own people. This is what concerns me the most about a Biden presidency, is we're returning back to that old norm under Obama where we had... The WikiLeaks scandals were released where we had uh, the Edward Snowden documents released where we found out the American people were being spied on illegally. FISA courts were being rigged. And this is appalling. But maybe, just maybe, this administration is going to act so haphazardly with so much... um, with such a type of moral ambiguity that they do not believe they can be in any way held accountable, no matter what they do. So far, I would say they are right. We had Trump in office, apparently with evidence, this entire time that the uh, peaceful transfer of power never occurred, that the previous administration before him spied on a political campaign, attempting to use the power of the federal government to destroy political opposition. That is scary. And why was nothing ever done about it? So, you know, um, Trump, obviously, his time has come. And to everybody that is sad to see that happen, all I can tell you is there may be silver linings you're not seeing. I would definitely assume a lot of the right-wing fear porn you're consuming Because I watch all of it. I watch everything on the left and the right and in between. And I know both sides have been pushing these narratives hardcore that, you know, the left wing media has been pronouncing that if Trump wins, which is unlikely, the polls were way off on their part. But they have been assuming if he wins, it's the end of America. And likewise, on the right, I do think there's probably more credible claims on the right wing fear porn side, but it's all fear porn. And it's, it's largely exaggerated.
just like the left stream media had, you know, p- pointed out that Trump is going to have access to the nuclear codes. We're going to be in a war with North Korea, all these things. Well, now we're going to have that coming out in large part about Joe Biden from the right wing media, which is much smaller. And they, if you're not careful, the right wing media is going to shoot itself and is going to give we know we're in a censorship and information war with big tech right now. I'm not telling you don't speak the truth. But I am telling you, maybe there is some reason that you could avoid giving them to shut you down and shut you up. You know, speak with reason, speak truth, but understand our words have consequences and you don't want to incite the entire country up into a frenzy and, you know, get people inciting to violence. It's not the answer here. It's just not. No matter it, how upset you are or how afraid you are of the the coming administration, I don't think it's going to be that bad, honestly. And I think if it is, if it does get extremely uh, unfavorable to the American people, and if we have you know new wars started, if we have crackdowns on on American rights, and I think you know we have. We're going to see in large part the pandemic is going to, the lockdowns will probably get really crazy now. The economy is probably going to get strangled now. And that may, even if it is a sacrifice in the short term, even if it's my sacrifice, even if it's my economic stability, even if it's yours, wouldn't it be worth it if the left forever after created a scenario where they had to dissolve themselves where the left was no longer considered the party of the people forever after. I think that was the direction we were going to turn in if Hillary Clinton won in 2016. After 12, after uh, eight years of Obama, the, the likely chance, you know, people were sick of it first and foremost. You're talking about we elected a person who had no political or government or military background of any kind, just used Twitter to get elected. So people wanted to disturb the system. People wanted to disrupt the system. And that was exactly why he was voted in. But now I think you're seeing people are recognizing we're in an extremely difficult time. And I don't think everybody has enough information going into this to realize that we may have just made our circumstances way worse. Um, But if that's the case, I think it will ultimately have results that favor the American people, not the GOP, because I don't think they represent the American people. I think I have major complaints about both political parties, because in in many ways, no, the right has not actively came after Americans' rights, or they have not engaged in a lot of the shenanigans that we've seen from big tech and the left and the mainstream media but they've not done anything to stop them. How many hearings have I watched Jack Dorsey and Mark Zuckerberg and all these people get drugged before Senate? And what what comes of it? Nothing. Nothing. You know, and this is the attitude of the right is they're just going to and just like the voter fraud claims now. And I'm sorry, all you people on the right who don't understand why this is so dumb. But if it's true going into the election that we knew this was going to cause concern. It could possibly shift the results of the election. Why wasn't anything done about it? You know, if the Obama campaign did spy on the Trump campaign and there's evidence of it, why wasn't anything done about it? Why has there only been one indictment of like a lawyer for the FBI? He's nobody. He's a nobody. It's a nothing thing. It's a big nothing burger as of right now. And whatever opportunity Trump did have to to bring something substantial before the American people, that time is gone. You know, it's too late. And I I don't know what to say about all of that. But have faith. You know, and even if even if it comes down to the worst possible scenario and consequences, this nirvana is not for this world. Okay? We are lucky to be among one of the most privileged people to ever exist in all of human civilization, we who live in the West. Yes, we have discord and we have an extremely, increasingly dysfunctional society, but we have it a lot better 
than most of the people alive on earth or people who have ever lived. We definitely have it a lot better than our grandparents. And ultimately, I think the answer is always faith over fear. So I'm Jeremy Honecker. Thank you for tuning in. You guys have a wonderful weekend. And let's see what this Biden administration is all about.